Okay, um, a few people have asked me for the answers to these questions, the first lot of chemistry revision questions. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to tell you the answers. Uh, hopefully I haven't made any mistakes. If I have, let me know. So uh, what is an element? It's substance made of just one type of atom. There's 92 naturally occurring elements. Uh, a compound contains several elements chemically combined. There has to have been a chemical reaction. If there wasn't, then it's just a mixture. Ionic and covalent. Uh, an ion is a, an atom or molecule that has gained or lost one or more electrons. Uh, what kind of elements become positive ions uh, are metals and non-metals become negative ions. And the four polyatomic ions that we need to know, uh, NO3 minus, OH minus, SO4 two minus, and CO3 two minus. Uh, next, if an equation is balanced, then you've got the same relative amount of each element on either side of the equation. If you like, you've got the same number of atoms on either side of the equation. That, that isn't balanced, uh, but they, there you see, I've balanced it. Okay. Uh, electrons are found in shells orbiting the nucleus. Um, an orbital is it's if you like an orbital can fit two electrons which are spinning oppositely so it's kind of like a space for two electrons uh, electrons have this property called spin and two electrons spinning opposite each other is a way of imagining what an orbital is okay um, the subshells are spd the next one is f um, how many electrons in an s is two because it's one orbital. Uh, a P has got three orbitals, so that's six, and a D has got five orbitals, so that is 10. Um, electron configurations for these, basically how many electrons has it got, uh, and whereabouts are they in the subshells and things, and uh, I'll leave you to read that. Use your pause button. Uh, what happens when a metal and a non-metal react and form an ionic bond? Well, the metal loses one or more electrons, the non-metal gains one or more electrons. A solid ionic compound is a giant lattice of positive and negative ions attracting each other, keeping it together when it's a solid. Uh, cations are positive ions, anions are negative ions. Uh, what kinds of metals can have ions with different charges is uh, transition metals. For example, Fe2+, Fe3+, they can have different amounts of charge. The dot, dot diagrams for the atoms and ions, there they are there. You only need to draw the outer shell, and if it's charged, then that's how you show that it's charged with that bracket there. The strength of an ionic bond depends on the number of electrons exchanged and the size of the atoms. Okay, um, if the ions have exchanged more electrons, then the bond is stronger. If the atoms are smaller, then the opposite charges are closer together, so the bond is stronger. A covalent bond is when they share electrons. Uh, you need to be able to do these dot cross diagrams, so that's a Cl2 molecule. A tetrahedron is this 3D shape. It's like a triangle at the bottom with a, an apex at the top. And it, they're very important in organic chemistry, which is kind of the chemistry to do with living things. It's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Um, that's a double bond on the CO2 molecule. There are two double bonds. Uh, a dative bond, also called a coordinate bond, is where both of the electrons come from the same atom. Uh, and a good example of that is in that ammonium ion, there is a, a dative bond. The strength of a covalent bond depends on the length of the bond. The smaller it is, the stronger it is. 
because the opposite charges are closer together. And the number of electrons being shared, as in a double bond is stronger than a single bond, and then a triple bond is stronger than that. Uh, metallic bonding, there's a diagram, you've got your delocalized electrons, you've got your metal ions in a regular structure, uh, held together by the attraction of the opposite charges. Uh, metals are good conductors of electricity because uh, a current, an elect electrical current, is the flow of charge and the free electrons can move through the wire carrying charge. Uh, the good conductors of heat because again the free electrons can carry energy through the metal and as the atoms are close together in a regular structure, uh, energy can be transferred from atom to atom uh, very well. Um, metals are ductile, they can be drawn into wire. When that happens, layers of atoms slide over each other. And metals are quite strong because the attractive forces involved are quite strong. Uh, down a group, the melting point decreases because the atoms have more shells, so the opposite charges are further apart, so the atoms aren't held together as strongly. Uh, uh, group two have higher melting points than group one because there are more free electrons uh, and there are more protons in the nucleus, so basically the, the charges involved are bigger, so the attractive force is bigger, holding it together. Why do elements have different masses? Because they've got different numbers of protons and neutrons. Um, I mean, the electrons don't really count their masses, zilch. It's the protons and the neutrons, which is important. The relative atomic mass is the mass compared to carbon-12. Yeah, relative means compared to, and it is the mass compared to carbon-12, which we say has a mass of 12. Uh, this is where you use your periodic table. Uh, work with these, work to one decimal place. So, for example, magnesium is 24.3, silver is 107.9, etc. Uh, and then the relative molecular mass, you see, you just add them up basically, looking at the numbers. Um, I'm assuming these are straightforward and you can do them. Okay, you can have relative atomic mass, uh, relative molecular mass, or if it's an ionic compound, the relative formula mass. It's the relative mass. Um, what is a mole? Well, how many particles are there in a mole? It's this big number, it's called Avogadro's constant, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles, okay? Uh, what is it the number of? It's the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. Okay, uh, this triangle, uh, little m is the mass, big M is the relative mass, the molar mass, uh, and then little n is the number of moles. Uh, and the next few questions are just using that. I I'm not gonna work my way through them because it's just, dividing numbers basically you should be able to do that be careful that the mass needs to be in grams in this particular case the mass needs to be in grams if you want the number of moles uh, here's an equation how many moles of HCl are needed to react with one mole of sodium hydroxide well it's one to one looking at the equation so one mole uh, what's the mass of a mole of HCl? This is what we were doing on the last slide. Um, what's the relative molecular mass of the three compounds in the equation? Again, that's the same thing. How many moles of hydrogen peroxide would 50 grams contain? Uh, that's just using the triangle. So it'd be 50 divided by 34. Uh, what mass of oxygen would be produced? Uh, well, we know how many moles we're gonna get and so we can work out the mass, if you know the mass of a mole. Uh, lithium reacts with water. How many moles of water are needed to react with one mole of lithium? Well, looking at the equation, there's, it's, there's two and a two, so it's one to one, so one mole. Uh, 20 grams of lithium react with water, so work out the number of moles of lithium. Uh, what mass of hydrogen is produced? Well, it'll be half as much because Lithium to hydrogen is two to one, so it will be half as many moles. Uh, and then you can work out the, the mass of hydrogen 
produced. Uh, concentration is measured in moles per decimeter cubed. Moles per decimeter cubed. Uh, one decimeter cubed is a liter or a hundred, a thousand milliliters or a thousand centimeters cubed. It's that volume. Uh, and so putting those in order, you know, 0 0.55 liters is 550 uh, milliliters. Uh, 0.6 decimeters cubed is 600 milliliters, 700 milliliters, 750 milliliters, etc. Uh, one mole of sodium hydroxide has a mass of 40 grams. Calculate the following. So now, um, actually, I'll add on here um, that the concentration is the uh, number of moles divided by the volume. So there you go. There's a triangle you should learn, really. Uh, the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed is the number of moles divided by the volume in decimeters cubed. OK, and bearing that in mind, I'm not going to work my way through all of these. There's the answers, uh, unless I've made a mistake, that is.